You are listening to the Wrestling Changed My Life podcast, episode 91, with Stevan Michik. You know, with, with my dad, I just told him, I was like, hey, I, I don't like, I don't want to lose, I don't want to just do this to just be kind of decent at it. Like, I want to be the best. We can endure anything and adapt and pivot and change. Wrestling gave us that ability. I would say nothing in life has impacted me more than the things wrestling has taught me in terms of self-reflection, resilience. Toughness. Some guys have it, some guys don't. Adversity, 100%. How to pick myself up and be a man after I failed. And everything that has shaped my life and where I'm at today would not be there without the values and basically the the lessons I've learned through the sport of wrestling. For me, wrestling saved my life because it, it allowed me to focus and channel my energy. We're fortunate if you wrestled because if you wrestled, natural talent helps, but it's, it's 5% of the ingredient. It pales in comparison to heart and technique and effort. It humbled me, taught me humility. Nothing can hit, humble you more than wrestling. I think it's the learning to adapt, right? You learn, you learn how to adapt, you learn how to solve problems. You know, if I look back at my time I spent wrestling, if it gave me one thing more than anything else, it's mental toughness. What's going on, everybody? It's Ryan with Wrestling Changed My Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. My guest today is the great Stevan Micic, 2020 Olympian for Serbia. He qualified the weight by placing fifth at the 2019 Worlds. He's also a three-time All-American from Michigan. And back in high school, he finished his last three seasons 141-0. Just a stud among studs. Great guy. Really enjoyed the conversation. Fan of the Week goes to Monticello Wrestling on Twitter. That's Coach Wendell out in Charlottesville, VA. Thank you so much for tuning in. Last but not least, quick plug to the online store. It's store.wrestlingchangemylife.com. My favorite item of the week is the Graduate Crew Neck. It has that Michigan look and feel, which is ironic since Stefan goes to Michigan. And it's store.wrestlingchangemylife.com if you want to support the show. Last thing I'll say is this conversation was recorded over Skype, which is not our standard procedure. And so at parts, there's a little bit of wonkiness to the audio. Forgive me. It's my fault. Won't happen again. Most of these are recorded over a different channel. That's it, folks. Let's give it up for the king of Serbia, Stefan Michik. What's going on, everybody? It's Ryan with Wrestling Changed My Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. My guest today is the great Stevan Michik, 2020 Olympian for Serbia. He qualified the weight by placing fifth at the 2019 Worlds. He's also a three-time All-American from Michigan. And back in high school, he finished his last three seasons 141-0. Just a stud among studs. Great guy. Really enjoyed the conversation. Fan of the Week goes to Monticello Wrestling on Twitter. That's Coach Wendell out in Charlottesville, VA. Thank you so much for tuning in. Last but not least, quick plug to the online store. It's store.wrestlingchangemylife.com. My favorite item of the week is the graduate crew neck. It has that Michigan look and feel, which is ironic since Stefan goes to Michigan. And it's store.wrestlingchangemylife.com if you want to support the show. Last thing I'll say is this conversation was recorded over Skype, which is not our standard procedure. And so at parts, there's a little bit of wonkiness to the audio. Forgive me, it's my fault, won't happen again. Most of these are recorded over a different channel. That's it, folks. Let's give it up for the king of Serbia, Stevan Michik. Peace! And by I was in sixth grade, I, you know, was with my dad, I just told him, I was like, hey, I, I don't like, I don't want to lose, I don't want to just do this to just be kind of decent at it. Like, I want to be the best, and can you help me? So I really asked my dad to kind of take over and, is kind of a, a mentor and a life coach for me. So that's kind of how my, my journey of wrestling started. And it sounds like he really kind of went all in and learned it himself, right? Like yeah, he started learning yeah. techniques and... Yeah, so he he's he's a very devoted dad, like in that point. Like both my parents are very like uh, into what we're doing, me and my younger sisters. Um, but especially with me, when I kind of came to him too about it, he, he was already picking stuff up about wrestling and learning. 
But once I did that, he just became a fanatic about it and really started loving it. I mean, the guy the guy breaks down film and watches more wrestling than anybody I know <laughs> that's been wrestled. I mean, it's he's he's addicted to it. Um, so sometimes, uh, you know, it's almost it's kind of a good balance though because uh, he he's so into that stuff. It can honestly help me. Like, I feel like I can push off a little bit of it to him sometimes. Um, we have a good balance with our relationship. We talk talk every day still. Um, really? About my technique and yeah, of course. Like we we I spend usually in a couple of, like a at least an hour every day after I finish practice at nighttime, just discussing our by practice and and other stuff like that. Um, so I don't have that first hand, but um, either FaceTiming or watching a match together, a couple matches together, doing stuff like that. Yeah, so we're we're pretty serious about that stuff and. But at the same time, though, he's kind of like, he's going to do it regardless. So he can sometimes help me where I don't have to think about it all the time. So right. I feel like I'm not, I don't feel like I'm so, everything's on my plate at once. So our dynamic works good. He has, a, he's got really good brain for it, man. And I kind of have a good feel for it because, you know, I'm the one doing it. So right. we work together, you know, it's, it's, it's a good, it's a cool dynamic, uh, father and son for sure. We, you know. Was it tough when he had to hand off the reins to search this in high school or how did that kind of work? So, so actually, so yeah, so Alex was, um, so Jason Sertis, who's a national champion in Northwestern, his older brother, Alex is an all American for, um, Iowa high school um, legend, high school legend. Yeah. And, uh, so Alex had came out of college, I believe for like one year, he was a year out of, out of college. He came back and ran a clinic at our high school and, um, me and my dad, you know, thought Alex was like, his technique is like, I'm telling you, like the guy is one of the best technicians, in my opinion, that I've ever worked with and that I've ever seen wrestle. Yeah. Just didn't have the best college career, didn't know how to put it together. And he knew that. And that's something that, you know, once, once I met Alex and kind of, I was actually the first person Alex worked with as a, as like a student, kind of like giving, getting private lessons from once he came back right. from, from college. And, you know, my dad kind of was the one to help him come up with the idea to be like, hey, you should start. Like, we kind of had uh, our own, like, high, the high school club area by us was kind of spotty. Either you either kind of had to jump around a lot or go to Illinois, go up to uh, Chicago area. Like, yeah. you know, Izzy style overtime, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, my dad kind of had the idea, like, hey, Alex, you're a big name. You can bring a lot of, a lot of guys in here. And uh, so he ended up... Uh, you know, opening up Region Wrestling Academy, and I was the first person to, to work with Alex. And my dad and him worked together a lot on a lot of stuff, and we were able to use Alex. and And, and he was able to come to me, and, and I was kind of like, not a guinea pig, but like I was the first person that that Alex was able to really just put a lot of stuff into and try a lot of things. And he he was the reason I would say that I made a big leap and bound my fresh. So I started eighth grade year. I'd probably say freshman sophomore year of high school. I was able to make that huge gap just because mentally he was able to really be there for me to understand when things started getting tough and I started getting to that level of like, you know, um, this isn't, this isn't like, uh, this is like national tournaments. We're going to Fargo. We're going to, you know, right. I, I was competing in all these Tila cadet tournaments and, and all those things. That's where Alex really helped me shine. And, and with my technique, you know, finishing, getting off bottom, um, you know, Keep my defense good, hand fighting in good position, things like that. That my because you know my dad's very open to stuff. So it was something that we were able to take away from Alex, and he was a, he helped me so much, and he was kind of what you know got me to the level that I needed to be in. And uh, yeah, so I, I really thank Alex for that all, all the time, you know. And, and uh, uh, did he work with you on like mental stuff too? Like you know when you get to one of those matches where you know you're at Fila Cadets or at Fargo and it's the semis and you're down one with 30 seconds left, kind of oh, getting through time. those barriers. What, do you have time. any stories about that? So, I do actually. I have two. So one, the first story I have is uh, my freshman year of high school. Um, I ended up finishing third at the state tournament at 103. Um, and uh, that year I had lost four times to the same kid who would train with me at practice at, at region and went to, I went to Hanover central, um, the high school Andrew house from mm -hmm. and, uh, Paul Petrov's from. And so our high school is pretty, pretty tough, like individually, but we're small. 
he, this kid, Josh Fuqua, happened to go to Crown Point, who I'm good friends with now, but, uh, you know, didn't really – he wrestled, like, in a small school after college, but kind of really, you know, his big time was in high school. And uh, he beat me four times in the, in the year, and I was better than him, like, pretty I – I had his number in practice and stuff. And after I take two losses, he was kind of in my head a little bit through the year. It was kind of hard to get over that barrier. And I ended up losing the state. I, I knew he had won the fi- uh, made the finals on the other side. Uh, of the bracket and I ended up losing to Nathan Boston in the semifinals uh, knowing that I had to would have to wrestle Josh in the finals if I won and actually that was something that I was really really nervous about doing and I kind of froze up in my in my semis because of that knowing that fact when I when I had the lead in the match too in the semis um how did it go so, down in the semis? Like how how I, late in the match were you winning? I I scored back points on top um and I ended up blowing a 3-1 lead and lost 5-3. to three. I got taken down and gave up a tilt. So, like, it was kind of oh. like I let, I just kind of sat there and, like, you know, it was kind of like one of those, like, really embarrassing things, which I – honestly, I credit all of my successes from that point on to kind of that area because since then, like, I came back from that and just was like, who cares what happened, like, whatever. I know, like, I learned a lot from that. And uh, literally that summer – I started competing in more tougher tournaments and uh, next year or that summer I ended up winning Fargo. Like, you know, you just said like, Hey, what happens? Like if you're down, whatever I ended up, so I, I wrestled Keyshawn Hayes and like, you know, the Fargo brackets, the pools, that was the yeah. toughest match I had all the turn, all tournament, but I had him like fourth or fifth round. And uh, I think I was down. I had actually, I was winning. I gave up a takedown with like 17 seconds left. I stood up on the, tr- I grabbed his ankle though from like a gut wrench position. I stood up on my feet and I walked him out of bounds and got a push out and won the match. So it was like insane. Like, <laughs> so I, I, yeah, it was like, it was like a, cr- it was crazy. And I like, with like seven seconds left, I was, I ended up winning the match just because like I brought up neutral and I got a push out. It was pretty crazy. So, uh, Dude, so it yeah. sounds like that was one of those turning point matches. Everybody I talked to has a match and it's always a loss. That it, maybe it's a loss in the NCAA finals, or maybe it's a loss in high school. But you know, everyone has one of those losses that was a turning point. So that seems like that was it for you. Yeah, for for I would say jumping to the next level. Um, you know, I think you kind of have each gauge through right. through like you, you might have another one, but that was the one I would say was go that area was like where I would say I got I kind of changed my mindset of being like okay, am I going to be serious or am I going to, like, try to be the best wrestler? That's kind of was that that match for me. And, I mean, even when you have those matches, like those matches and you get to the next level, you might have to go through that again to win what you have to win. I'm definitely going to have to do that again to be an Olympic champion this in, in August. You know, I'm totally. going to have to overcome some tough stuff. So, yeah, of course. Uh, but that was definitely something for me that got me to that to that next level um, well, from high school, though, I would say, got me through high school and into that college mindset. Um, Another big one, and I'm just guessing, but, you know, you, in 2015, you got third in the world, but, you know, rewind six months, you wrestle Fix at the U.S. Open, and he wins. Um, yeah, that know, it, was a big one, too, and Alex helped me a lot there as well. Um, I kind of wasn't in the most ideal training situation at Northwestern. The dynamic there was a lot different than it is now, Yeah, um, and uh, I really had to take get in the driver's seat a lot for freestyle and realize like, Hey, I want to make this junior team. Um, what I'm doing right now, how that result happened at us open isn't, isn't cutting it. And so I had to kind of step up and, um, yeah, I mean, when did that match take place? That was in the spring. Yeah. So that was like, uh, I was, um, I think I was 18 at the time. So I was, so I was, uh, it was like March. I think it was in March of, um, 2015 had you wrestled him before that the next was june no what's that had you wrestled him before that never never um i just kind of looked past him a little bit to be honest with you i i really not that i didn't think like i just kind of i didn't wrestle like i didn't like i didn't put it all out there plus i overlooked him so it was kind of like a both thing it kind of was and he's tough so I kind of, that kind of happened. And then, uh, and he was younger. So I, you know, I kind of thought I was just going in like big dog and without really having, <laughs> he came to wrestle, you know? So then I was kind of like, all right, well, let's get prepared and actually try to wrestle and like wrestle hard and get trained. So I kind of got in that mindset and uh, being super 
disciplined in my drilling, super disciplined with my live, pushing myself in those areas that I need to work and making sure I was ready to wrestle him. You know, he had a couple tricks up his sleeve and, um, yeah, I came ready at the trials a couple months later. Um, I, um, yeah, then I ended up beating him two times in a row for to make the match. I mean, I and I controlled him both matches. Um, he still was, it was still a tough, tough. Uh, I saw it wrestle hard all, all right. six minutes both matches, but I definitely, you know, you could tell there was a big difference from there in a month and a half ago. And when I was watching it, I could, I um, yeah, it, it was just night and day, and so. You know, so you lose at the U.S. Open, and then fast forward six weeks, eight weeks at the trials, you wrestle in there. What, like, what are you thinking five minutes before the match, knowing that this guy beat you six weeks prior? I felt that I had prepared. I had done the stuff I needed to do, um, and I knew I was the better wrestler. I just had to just go and make sure that I took initiative, took you know the, the driver's seat, and I was ready. And that's what happened. So. Yeah, I mean, hey, it was it was definitely that was probably the next step for me. That was kind of like the next into college. Like, hey, like you know, I just I'm a junior bronze medalist. And then actually from that point going into college, um, there was a couple of things I I felt like I've always been um a little bit of a late bloomer, as in like my body getting ma- mm-hmm. mature. I it always took me a little bit longer. Like I was always smaller. I know I'm still wrestling 57 kilograms, but I don't really see myself as I feel like I'm a mature like a when I was trying to do 57 kilos kind of in that like Olympic year and, and wrestling, I felt really small weak. I just kind of made some dumb, like dumb decisions and freestyle stepping it, Ryan trying to wrestle a bunch of like senior level wrestlers. Um, but not, you know, that that's kind of what the difference was for me. It was just kind of like, and now like once I made that mental adjustment, yes, but now from then on in the next two years, I kind of had some physical adjustments and, um, I feel like I'm just as strong as, as anybody else in the world. You know, I, I, I can compete. It's just a matter of the littlest things to become a, a world champion, the littlest things to be an Olympic champion for me now. It's like those things. And now how am I going to be able to, to elevate my game in this next uh, nine months up to, to make the difference, to, to p- put a gold around my neck rather than any other medal or not, or not placing. And I mean, it's a big priority for me. And I, yeah, like those little things like that, uh, are definitely stepping stones to have gotten me here. But now it's like, and those are kind of like big ones, but now they're going to be like, they're like inches. Tiny, 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 yeah. tiny differences now. So so what's your day in the life like now? And, and how much time did you take off after the 2019 Worlds? So I'd taken off about, um, I'd probably say three weeks of time after mm-hmm. Worlds um, just to get my body kind of back under and then once I did get on the mat again, it wasn't anything like insane. It was just kind of working on some, some stuff. I didn't really have much time off uh, this whole this whole summer because uh, I had come off of an injury from from NCAA's. Then I had gotten prepared for um, European Games, which I finished silver, and then I had Worlds, so it was pretty like quick. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean. So you took a few weeks off, and like, what is it like now that we're coming into competition season again? Are you working out in the morning, at night? And what's your kind of rest and recovery? What, what's your what's your day in the life like look like for a, a professional athlete? So, so yeah, so now, um, you know, I'm get, I have a regiment time. I'm always getting up around like seven. Uh, I mean, as much as like I don't have like school and stuff going on, you could say, oh, I don't, I'm not doing much, which I do have a good amount of off time, but that's also needed for the amount that I'm putting totally. in totally and doing totally. stuff, you know. So. You know, I'm getting up around seven. I have to go. I lift twice a week. And then usually after my lifts, I do like a physical therapy uh, kind of pre- injury prevention. I definitely I started implementing that. I definitely need to have that, you know, three times a week of just and then at one, in the days I don't have it, I have to do it on my own, you know, like uh, in my room or something. Just just keeping my body in maintenance, especially when you're coming down when I'm coming down to 57 kilograms, you know, um, something I gotta, can't get my body, let my body be an issue. Um, and then, you know, I have practice usually twice a week, Mondays, well, Mondays once because of the lift, Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, I usually have, uh, Matt, uh, twice a day, Mon- morning, usually technique we have with Sergey in the mm-hmm. mornings and the afternoons again with Sergey with usually a match or we have, um, one day a week we go with the college guys, like usually Tuesday afternoons we do the college guys. And that's kind of like just a more of a conditioning, I mean, more live base, but I kind of like it a little bit just because 
I like to be able to push my barrier a little bit still in college. You, you know, even though we're doing, I'm doing mostly neutral stuff. You still, it's kind of endurance versus sprint. You know, when yeah. you talk about folk style and freestyle. So, um, definitely like to have, make sure I have that endurance if I need it. And it's kind of good still practicing that. I, I, I've got to keep my conditioning in, in shape. Um, and then, you know, Fridays, we, you know, we'll either do like either two practices or we'll do like a middle of the day, a match day simulation, you know. Okay. And what's your um, tournament schedule look like coming up before the Olympics? Are you going to go to the Euro Games again? And kind of what does so that look yeah, like for you? European championships in Rome I'll go to. And then most likely I'll do both ranking tournaments, uh, the Rome and uh, – uh, the Poland one, but we'll see. Um, probably just just because it's the best shot for me. To, I mean, I I'm already with point wise. I I mean, why not go into the Olympics being being seated top four and right. and not see one of those guys till the semifinals, right? You know what I mean. So um, that's good. That's the best option to do it for me. For me, you know what I mean. It's a little different for some people who don't don't have that. You know, if like like for Worlds last year. I, I didn't have a chance to wrestle at the European Championships. It was right after NCAAs, and my knee, my knee was messed up a little bit. So uh, it would have been dumb for me to, you know, that that's a big chunk of points. You know, the way that the system works, it's it's crazy. You know, you kind of have to plan. It's like, well, it'd be better off me just competing in the Euro Games, which that is a, an I Olympic Committee event. It's for the, like an Olympic event. It's not uh, it's not a a UWW sanctioned ranking tournament. So. I'm going to compete in that because Serbia wants me to, but there's, there's no point in doing a bunch of small tournaments trying to get points and not, you know, keep right. my body healthy, make the weight when I need to. But this year it's a little different. Like, right, I already have – I'm going to have a, a big chunk of points from Worlds. Why not go to the tournaments where I can get make sure I'm getting ranked, you know? Right, absolutely. So that's, and how, so, so that's how it's working for me. So I'll, I'll be able to go to the European Championships, and that's okay. going to be a big amount of points, so – Dude, I don't think a lot of Americans realize, I'm sure they do realize how tough it is, like the people who are really in the weeds, but, you know, a lot of Americans don't wrestle in that event, but man, the Euro games are freaking loaded, loaded. Yeah, loaded. yeah, yeah. Like, for example, like, I beat Otley there, and so, like, my my world, I ended up losing to Azerbaijan in the finals, who's tough, but I think I, I he, he's, he's a big, like, I, I can't give up a big move, and and it ended up kind of costing me through the match because I try I like wrestling through it just was like I felt like I had to play catch up kind of over wrestling him. I kind of wish I would have I would had a fresh start. I know it would have been a, a little bit of a different match, but he's you know he's tough. I mean everybody in that weight is is tough from all those con- good countries. Um, but it was crazy. Like, I beat Otley. Um, Otley finished bronze, and then Ogaya finished bronze on the other side, who is a world champ. You know <laughs> you probably don't know that, but he finished bronze. I mean I finished silver. He finished bronze there. So I didn't realize like, okay. that. Yeah, you don't realize that it's a tough tournament. He didn't win Euro Games. So. <laughs> so we're talking a lot about current events now, but if we go back to when you transferred from Northwestern to Michigan, you got around Coach Borme. And, you know, I'm from Chicago area, so huge yeah. fan of Sean Borme. Like, how much have you grown from like 2015, 2016 redshirt year to where you're at now? And what's the impact of Coach Borme been? So Sean's been awesome to me. I mean, I knew I wanted to go to Michigan right away once the whole Northwestern thing kind of fell through and I, and I decided like, Hey, you know, I, I want to do, uh, I want to go to Michigan. I loved it there right away. And Sean was like, he saw a lot of potential in me. And not only has he, he know that I'm willing to do the stuff for him. Uh, he's open to helping me and like open to things and trying things for me. And, you know, like we got Sergey there. And he's great. He's great in the corner. Great coach. Um, you know, he's, he's leading the team in the right direction right now. Um, I know this year for us with Michigan, it's a little bit. Um, we're not right. as strong just because we've got red shirts. But like coming back next year, it'll be really cool. You know, kind of banking on that. And and he he's great. I mean, he's so personable and likable, and um, one of the like you know nicest guys you know. And but at the same time, I mean. He sometimes can get he scared the shit out of me. So, I mean, it's awesome. Prepare. He he's always got my back, and um, I I really respect him for that. It's awesome. Yeah, he's a great guy, and just uh, done a lot for wrestling in Illinois with the overtime school. And it's funny, you know, you were talking about your dad kind of helping search this get started with his club. It reminds me of when the Spanglers got uh, Bourne yeah. started with overtime. Kind of the same thing. Um, exactly, exactly. And what what ended up happening too is uh. 
Sean actually, so I've known Sean since I was probably fifth grade. And uh, the reason why I didn't go to overtime as a youth was I wasn't good enough to go. And I knew that. I, and it was too far. It was too far. And it was too much. It was a lot of, it was not too much money, but it was more expensive for knowing that I wasn't on that level yet. So right. I'm like, I have to work to get up to this point. And, um, you know, Andrew, that was Andrew Howe's place that he used to go. So he used to bring a couple guys from my room up to go with him. And, and, um, the difference is, was that once I got to the, the level I wanted to go to overtime, Sean had just was about leaving to go to Michigan. So we right. just kind of missed right there. So it ended up working out later on though. So I'm Crazy. So was Howe a big influence for you growing up? Yeah. In a way of just being like, doesn't really matter where you're from and he was he's a big influence just to look up to somebody like him because he is literally so self-driven like i don't yeah. know any but honestly i really don't know many people like andrew because he's so he he was doing he would be like in the weight room by himself working out 30 minutes before practice and i was like oh my gosh he's just doing pull-ups going, <laughs> going down doing squats doing doing bench like by himself like in our workout room, then you'd see him like, like a couple of days later, we'd just be driving around on like on the road and you'd see Andrew running. I'm just like, this guy is like either like, you know, he's, he's insane for doing all this <laughs> stuff, but then he would just go and bully people out there, like throw them around. And seeing that is like definitely something cool because it's like, Hey, I can do that. I can do it too. I can, I can be a really tough wrestler, you know? So right. I can, I can be one of the best just like Andrew and, um, so yeah, it was awesome. It's awesome having Andrew from this, you know, knowing him since I was a baby, basically. So, cool. well, like having an example to look to is always important. Um, it certainly he was that for you. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about was with Sergey coming in. I mean, we're talking about one of the greatest wrestlers of all time, and yeah. God, the fact that he's at Michigan now, what a blessing that must be. I mean, have you did you guys click right away, or did you know him before yeah. that? Yeah. So. Me and Sergey clicked right away. He knew that I was a good wrestler, but uh, so I had. So Sergey's been a lot of places though. Compared, like, you know, Russians don't. There's so many good wrestlers and so many like over the gener over the years. You know, I noticed like ru you see Russians everywhere because there's so many that they get jobs coaching for places. You see wrestlers competing for other places like all the right. time. I mean, being an American, you don't realize though that uh, like a, a quarter of the amount of guys at the world championships that are medalists for other countries were are Russian. So like I said, there's so many good wrestlers that are Russian. You just don't realize it. Sergey has been a lot of places coaching other places, you know, yeah. too. And uh, I actually beat the, the Kazakhstan guy. I hurt my knee. I beat, uh, what's his name? Sinaev from mm -hmm. Kazakhstan, uh, the silver and bronze medalist. I beat him a, a year ago. And uh, Sergey goes, I, I didn't know that you were, would be able to beat him. I had no idea. And, and like, it was just funny because he like knew who I was, but then as soon as he knew I, I had, he kind of, kind of get, had some street cred. He, he was like fully, fully in on me. And, uh, can he still then, scrap? Okay. He's, he can't, let's just say he's got the meanest part tear top I've ever seen in my life. Like there's nobody better than him. And I, I'm saying that like, he is so strong still for he's 62. 61 he's like ridiculously strong he can't really like drill that much though because he has a uh, replaced hip but he's like okay he's like you just feel him he just feels like heavy like he feels like his body is just like metal like he just Dude. like got it he's like he looks so good you would think he's like in his 40s like like early 50s or something right he's literally like like mean like he, he's got his body has got it <laughs> And he's like the funniest dude. He's he's like hilarious, and he's but he's got such a good eye for stuff. You know, at first um, when he came in, and I, I I really enjoy working with him and stuff. It's hard getting used to with some of his stuff. He's a little. He's got a lot of. He's got a lot of uh, older. He's got some throws. He's got some you know trips. He's got different types of uh, some techniques. But he's always looking for big bigger back points and bigger bigger points. And um, it took a little bit to get used to that a little bit. But having a lot of – at the end of the day, when you kind of just think about his mentality with wrestling, it's really what the, his, what he really wants. When you wrestle, it's kind of wrestling like that, how he just likes pressure, attacking both sides of the body. And me being able to uh, – that's kind of how I'm wrestling, you know, how I wrestle. 
Um, he really liked that. And I, now I'm just kind of buying into what he's doing over the last year. And I'm starting to, to kind of, I feel like I'm broadening my horizons a little bit with, with how he ha- he's having stuff. So, you know, really trying to take advantage of just listen to whatever he, what he's trying to say, even though sometimes I'm just like, like but before, you know, when he first came, it was just like, sometimes it was tough just because he's got this style is just, you know, and, and he'll tell you how it is too. It's like, it was Stevan, that, that move, no terrible do not do that again. maybe <laughs> they'll say maybe maybe work in high school maybe maybe collegiate will even work because co- everything works in collegiate that's what he says he that's thinks what it's he like says? the funniest thing yeah he's got like he he's a very he, he's pleased by very small we'll just say that yeah. which is which is acceptable right he Man, can, the- I, for him it's acceptable he's, he's one of the best of all time so i can i can give him that Dude, the first time I met him, I was 14 at the Sunkiss Kids Camp in Arizona, as is at Arizona State, and he was coaching uh-huh. the women's team. And, dude, he was intense back then, and he would say something, and you really couldn't understand him, and then he'd get mad if you didn't do it, and you'd be just terrified of this guy. So I tried to stay clear of the women's camp that week because I was just like a normal camper going to the Sunkiss Kids Camp. But then I yeah. looked into him, and I found his match against John Smith when they wrestled at the uh, – it was like some kind of standalone event in the early 90s. Have you seen that match? Yeah. Sir again, John Smith. I'm sure you've seen it a hundred times, but then I went down the rabbit hole in him and yeah, interviewing him was awesome. He's just, uh, he's, he yeah, is he, a funny guy. Yeah. He's so funny. He is so funny. He literally, he's always joking around and he's fun to be around. And, uh, and yeah, when talking about technique too, like he's personal, like he gets like, I feel like we mesh well in that way. And man, the dude is awesome too, to have in the corner coaching you too. Like he's got, he knows, when to throw the brick, he knows what to say. He knows like what to tell you. Um, and he's great. Like, I mean, I, I, it's a blessing having him around. I really yeah. look for him. And I mean, I know he go, he'll go to bat for me all, all day too. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's fully in on me. So it's and me and miles and all, and all the other freestyle guys, he's in all and all of us. So, yeah. So how many Olympians does Michigan have right now? Just two. We are trying to get, uh, well, two right now. And then, We'll see. Obviously, we've got USA guys still. We've got Habit and uh, a couple guys like, you know, Miles' brother and Dom, uh, so Malik, uh, Dom Abinator. Um, we'll see what they can do if they can, if they'll qualify. Hopefully, they will. Um, but non US guys. Who, who are guys you have not, wrestling not, other countries? Those, those are the non US guys. Okay. So it's, uh, San Marino, Lebanon, and Slovenia. That's, that's it. And, um, me and Dave did it. We were we were both on the same page. I think Dave was like a year before I was, just because that was when. But but we both kind of were. We we traveled a lot together earlier, and then okay. you know Miles and Dom both kind of have Miles and Malik already had dual citizenship with uh, San Marino, so because they were when they were born or since they've had it since birth, so they thought they could okay. they could do it. Ended up working for them. Um, they're also Lebanese, just like Dom is. Uh, they're from their dad's side. Um, but you know, they ended up working out because for two reasons, because Dom and Miles are both the same weight class. And so just kind gotcha. of if they were wrestling for the same country and they had to, they were the only two eighty six kilo guys. <laughs> and it just happened. They both had citizenship for San Marino. So, um, they compete for them. Dom decided Lebanon and, um, that's Dude, what other it. team though has that many Olympians? Like you think back to like. You know, Oklahoma State had three Olympians in 2004 with Kelly, Cormier, and Guerrero. Then Iowa's had a couple. But you Michigan guys have two right now. Two are on the same team right now. It's freaking crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah. If, if, and I mean, uh, Kuhn, Kuhn definitely has a good chance to do it, to be an Olympian too. So that would be three on one that have been on the same team. You know, one, two in freestyle, one in Greco. So Michigan could be up there too. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's awesome. So, that would be that would be cool too. Super cool. And I just have three questions I sourced from some buddies. To kind of rapid fire questions as we wind down here. Then yeah. we'll let you go. Cool. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. So the first one is, you know, when you're in a tight match like against Atley at the Worlds or you know any like super high level event, and let's say you're down with a minute left, what it, what is your self talk like? What are you saying to yourself if anything in those really tight matches? I've been I've been working on my self talk a lot, and I've also been. You know, that's a match. It's kind of just being like, hey, I'm down. Um, listen, I, I, I'm going to I'm going to score here. I'm going to be able to I can find offense. I just got to be able to push the pace and open them up a little bit. I, I can't I obviously can't get sloppy and be reaching up, but I'm always trying to stay in, in good position, pressing forward, looking to attack. And I mean, 
I ended up getting, I think, in that match, I I kind of made a dumb decision earlier trying to, you know, there's a couple p- times I was pushing him out on the end out of bounds or I was, I tried for two once and I didn't get it. Um, I do contribute that match a little bit to my, my weight cut. I think the first day I didn't feel that too hot um, at Worlds. But How um, far are you coming down from? Well, I was coming down from like, thir- I'm really lean. I'm coming down from like 39 which isn't okay. like insane, but I'm just yeah. very lean. Yeah. Um, 39, I'll probably 140, you know, like usually I, I try to stay under 140 when I'm, when I'm training, you know, I, I can go above, but not honestly much. Cause I'm, I, I'm, I'm very lean all the time, but, um, I don't think I did it really too great. Not saying that I like, I didn't like, well, I, I, I thought I was disciplined with it. I just didn't really have any education with it, but now I'm, you know, this year I definitely feel like I'm, you know, I'm my, I'm already doing about a better job. You know, I'm already weighing right now around like 136-ish, 137. Yeah, with my self talk, you know, I um that's something I'm I'm definitely working on, just trying to stay positive through the matches. Um, pulling the trigger when I when I have the opportunity. I you know a couple times, sometimes a few times in that match actually, I thought I had an opportunity to shoot and I hesitated a little bit and I wish I would have just pulled the trigger. You know, yeah, I got to think more about reacting after the point of then just thinking about the outcome, you know, especially, but that doesn't help when you are tired either. When you aren't feeling great, you are a little bit hesitant. So I'm trying to tell myself, regardless of how I'm feeling, like, Hey, I get that chance. I'm pulling the trigger, react to it later. I'll, I'll, you know, I get to like, I know I'm going to, I'm a good finisher. That's one of my best positions. So let's just, Dude, let it, that, not so. only that, but like when you're in that bronze medal match against Kazakhstan, you got the whole arena cheering against you. And I'm going to say right now, that was freaking two. I, I rewatched the match last night. That was, oh, they, I, I, I posted they, it on Twitter, man. There's no way that's not two. That's freaking they, criminal. They, they stole the match. They stole two points from me. They, they gave him four points instead of one. And they also gave, they took a minute off the match. They stopped, did you, I don't know if you noticed, but they stopped the clock on purpose and then they took a minute to notice it. So we wrestled it and then they said that it literally stopped at like whatever and, you know, about 35, like, you know, 40 seconds went by, but they, they cut it down to like a minute and 10 or something like that. So I had like 14 seconds in the period. I'm like, I thought I just wrestled for like only a minute, like a minute and a half in the match. And, the, and there was a, still, you know. If you watch it back, you'll you can t- just count yourself and see how long when the clock look at when the clock stops and just count until how long they we wrestled for, and Dude. then you'll see what they put back on the clock. They they cut off, they cut like another thirty seconds or so. It's insane. It's, it's messed up, dude. They're throwing water bottles on the mat, tennis balls. It's freaking chaos out there, man. It's I, I just yeah. don't. I mean, knowing knowing I should have been a little bit more aware of. The situation going for a medal against Kazakhstan, they're definitely going to be some tampering with ref- officials and referees. And yeah. there was in my match. I've never really been in a match like that before where I've, all things were against you. Um, so definitely in that position, I wish, you know, I know it was two, but I wish I would have been a little more stingy to just have been, got the two and like made it clear so the ref, there was no bias. Um, you laid a cross face on that dude that I thought would for sure. The ref- yeah, the referee actually blew the whistle and said, no, no here. And I'm like, I, what? I was like, that's a cross face. You can cross face people. So, yeah, the referees, it was bad. It, it was bad. It was definitely in. I mean, it was like that point, too. Like, throwing the cube would have just, I knew, like, would have given him a point. So, it was yeah. kind of like, I should have just done a better job showing I had two points, you know. Uh, been a little more stingy earlier because, you know, I rolled him through and then, he got behind me and they gave him an extra two points when it like usually just a one point for like uh if there's uh, any exchange and so you someone finish if i get two right. and he comes behind it's just one well they gave him two again so i was like i don't know what where that <sighs> came from um so it was just it was wild that match was like one of the most wild matches but i was honestly a little more i i felt good in that match i was just a little more upset i would say about otley's because you know I actually I felt robbed in, in the Sanayev match. I felt like I wrestled pretty good. I pressed hard. I, I put effort in. I, you know, I've made some dumb a couple dumb decisions, of course, but I was I was robbed. You know, blind. And yeah. but Otley's match, I felt like that was the match that you know I needed I needed to win to be the be the world champ that year, uh, just to lead, to get get Ugui in the finals. And I know I'm a good matchup, especially second day with him. Yeah. Um, so, 
Yeah, like self talk. Just so close, and, dude. So close. So close. So close. Yeah. The, so. the next next question is like when you're when you're you know training and you're doing these cycles where you're not competing a lot. Do you spend any time visualization or doing any type of mental reps to get yourself ready and recreate kind of the events you're going to uh, go to? I, I do a little. I wouldn't say like total mental reps, but I would just say I try to visualize myself in these positions. Um, I, and it just sometimes just happens just because I'm competitive and I get like anxious to compete. Like It's yeah. just bound to happen when I'm, I have some type of free time on the plane, going there, in the hotel by myself, just thinking about how I'm going to be wrestling, how I think I'm going to, how I'm going to close the gap and, uh, you know, my ties, grabbing, grabbing the guy, how I'm going to be pressuring, defending, getting my legs back, you know, all that kind of stuff. Wrestling through all my positions hard. Um, right. Just making everything like a battle for, for themselves, for both of us. And if I get into those positions where it's a battle, that's where I know where I'm going to, I'm going to come out on top rather right. than, you know. So, yeah, that's how, that's how I feel in those positions. And, well, and last question is, I know you're obviously wrestling for Serbia, your family's you know, super proud Serbian family. Talk about how that all came about and what it means to you to represent Serbia, knowing your family you know, immigrated from Serbia to get to the U.S. Yeah, so um, my, like I said, my grandparents, uh, they came from Yugoslavia, uh, former, like, or, uh, former Yugoslavia, which is now uh, Serbia. Um, there's like seven different countries all in that area. Um, came in the, in the late fifties. Um, dad was born here with, uh, three other siblings and they learned English through school and through my grandpa from work a little bit, but not, not much spoken. Like my grandma always says, the only thing I understood when I came here was babies crying and bird, birds chirping. <laughs> There's nothing else she knew. Um, and you know, she was just staying at home and cooking, cleaning, working like that. And they ended up moving on up. They bought a farm to move on to it. And my dad like grew up working, and um, on a farm with my um, with my aunts and uncles growing up until they got into, you know, after high school. And, yeah, just being, like, having my Serbian heritage in my culture means a lot to me. Um, knowing, like, there's a lot of pride to be to be a Serb and behind that in the, in, in the first place. Um, I've grown up being proud of where I'm, where I'm from, proud of that part of my family, you know, going to church. Yeah, being with my family, uh, going to Serbian weddings are like one of the best things you can experience if you've ever <laughs> been to one. Uh, and yeah, I would say like just all that stuff, having that part of my uh, of my of my um, of my heritage is something I, I'm super proud of, and I've always have been. You know, I'm proud of my name that I have. Um, I'm proud of you know, you know what my grandparents did, like my grandpa did to come over here, and you know. And obviously, no matter what, like I still am American. I love being being able right. to live in this country. But um, being able to represent Serbia and where I'm from is also a huge honor for me. Um, and I, I definitely would say they've they've helped me out a lot. And yeah, I, I'm I'm so excited for this. Is the, I think or I know I made the right decision here with what I'm doing um, and competing for. And I wouldn't I couldn't be happier there. Last thing we always ask is how did wrestling change your life? And you're so young. You know, most of the people we have on the show are like 50, 60 years old so they can reflect back. But just now in your, um, in your young life, how, how would you say wrestling has shaped or changed your life? Wrestling has changed my life definitely. Like, I don't know what I would – to be honest with you, I've thought about – I don't know what I would be doing if I didn't wrestle. Like, I always say soccer is like my other favorite sport. Like, I love – love like European football and like watching like Barcelona play and enter and whatever. But I'm like, maybe I'd play soccer. It's like, no, I live in America. No way I'd be good at soccer. And but honestly though, I, I do know that if I were doing something, I would want to put it full it, it to its fullest, but I'm so happy that I chose wrestling as much. Sometimes, you know, you're cutting weight and you're doing all this stuff. Um, I think that it shaped my personality and it shaped me as a person of just like getting into good habits. Um, doing things I don't want to do, but knowing that it's going to be productive for me in the end of the day. Um, I benefit, I, I thank wrestling for that. So there's Absolutely. so many, there's so many positives that wrestling has taught me. Um, owning up to what, owning up to my own self, um, learning like what I have to take the fault in my own, in my own self sometimes. Self-awareness and, has to uh, be huge. Like anytime you have, Oh, it's all on you. You know what I mean? You learn, you learn that and learn to be like, Hey, it's okay. Like, I feel like this right now for a little bit, but I'm not going to feel like that later on. And I'm going to learn from it and make sure that doesn't happen again. And that happens in so many aspects of your life, you know, 
And one of the other ones I would say is like my flexibility of just things, uh, my flexibility for me, like as in as just a person and, and my personality has grown a lot because it's like, hey, things happen sometimes that you don't expect and you have to be able to get up and, and do and and do it, you know, or, or go up and, and, and do go out and do something um, that you don't want to do or you have to go. I don't know. There's so many different things. That, and then at the end of the day, and just staying positive through all of that. So that's why I feel like I'm a flexible person because of wrestling. Without that, I, I would probably be fired up and mad a lot more. I <laughs> and I wouldn't want to be doing a lot of stuff. So um, personality-wise and just being um, an accountable person, a flexible person, all of the above, I think I definitely thank wrestling for that. So it's Amen. definitely changed my life for the better. Amen, brother. Well, thank you for your thank time you so amidst your, uh, your training schedule. Huge fan of yours. Can't wait to watch you compete again, brother. Thanks Take care. Thanks so much, Ryan. And all great things must come to an end. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, give us a review, give us a rating, and share this with your friends. It would mean the world to us. Thanks for listening to Wrestling Changed My Life.